Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to work on our spell manager script a little bit so we can start using wave object to control whichever um, enemies are being spawned and when. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this one is going to be quite complicated, so try to follow uh, the best you can. First off, we're going to go in the game folder, in the script, and then create a new c -sharp script. And we're going to call this one wave. So this is going to be a wave object, so a um, group of minion that goes toward the ending of our level. Okay, so let's start off with using system.collection.generic. We're going to be using lists, and that is why I am adding this to the import list. Okay, wipe everything in there and then we are going to create ourselves a, a simple bool. So whoop, let's start with a private bool is playing is equal to false and whenever we start that wave then we're gonna turn uh, is playing to true. So let's start with public void start wave it is public because we're going to be calling it from the level manager and when we when we start that wave we're going to say is playing is now equal to true okay now we need a update so down here private void update and we're going to do if is not playing like this return so if the wave is not currently running we're simply going to quit directly from there and now this is where it gets a little bit complicated. So, in order to store uh, what happens during that wave, I'm going to use I'm going to use a new class, and that class is going to be called um, Wave Events. So we're going to be putting Wave Events inside of the Wave object, but this class is going to be nested. It's going to be inside the Wave class. So we're going to go down here and say public class Wave Event. And then we can start coding uh, just like this class. Oh wait, don't don't put parentheses here. So just like this, and then a wave event object is going to contain a public float duration. Say it is an event that lasts 15 seconds, so 15 seconds, and then after that, private float start time, which is really important. So we need to keep track of whatever time we start this event. Okay. And now this one is going to take function in there as well. So let's make a public void start event, just like this. And inside of the start event, I'm going to write start time is equal to time dot time. Okay. And now it also needs an update on itself. So below that, public bool, and I'll tell you why in a second, public bool run event, which is just like the update but we're going to be calling it from um, the wave object. And uh, yeah, so let's leave it there for now. We're gonna do return true. And now let's take a good look at our script. It's a little bit complicated, but uh, what, what is going to happen in the end is that our wave is going to contain a list of wave events. So let's do that right here actually. So public list of wave events and we're simply going to call them uh, events with an S and then is equal to a new list of wave event. Okay, so whenever we start the wave, it's going to play the first event. To do that, in the start wave, I am going to write if events oh, events.count is not equal to zero, so if we do have a event in there, we're going to say events at the index zero dot start event like this. Else, it is going to write a debug dot log for now. So debug dot log um, event ended, and also destroy this. So we have a wave object, a wave script on say the um, level manager, that's where, that's where we're going to be putting our wave scripts and this object has no wave event we simply destroy the script itself and then using our logic it is going to move to the next wave object okay so that works for the start wave, now if we go back to the update we're going to say if not event 
at the index zero dot run event. So run event is going to return ourselves a uh, bool. So whenever we complete the update loop successfully, so whenever we uh, run our event update successfully without interruption, so without having all the enemies dying, without having the duration runs out, then it's going to return true. Now if it returns false, so if it's interrupted by some kind of um, condition we have, we're going to say debug.log and wave, actually n um, event. Oh, I misplaced m. Okay, so this is n event, and up here it's going to be n wave. Inside the n event condition, we're going to say events at the index 0. Actually, never mind, we're going to say events, the whole list object, dot remove at index 0, just like this. So if the event is over, we simply remove it from the list. And then let's do a quick check. So if events.count is now equal to 0, so if it's empty, then now we're going to do the same exact thing we did up here. So uh, end wave and destroy this. So we run the event. If it is interrupted, so if it is over, then we say debug.log and event, and then we remove it from the list. After that, we check if the list is empty. If it is, we say end the wave. If it is not, then we're going to say events at the index 0 dot start event. And now this is working because when we said remove at, it reordered the list. So uh, the list removed the first index and it replaced it with the second index. So over here, this is now working and we're basically starting the next event in the list. Okay, so we have a sweet little system going on, but we're not spawning anything and we're not, you know, we're not doing anything that is going to help us in our game right now. So what we need now is some kind of information on where and what to spawn. And to do that, I'm going to create another nested class. So that's that's getting a little bit complicated, but just try to bear with me. So inside the wave event class, or actually, should I do it inside? Yeah, let's do it inside the wave event class. In there, I'll say public class spawn info, just like this. And we're going to start creating another class. So spawn info is going to contain a lot of uh, public fields like spawn point index, and you know what spawn point index is. We use it whenever we spawn um, any kind of enemies. This is to determine which spawn point we use. And then below that, uh, public int spawn prefab index. Right now we only have two of those, so zero is the little uh, orange balls, and one is the red capsule. And then below that, we're going to say, OK, we're going to spawn 10 of those. So public int amount is equal to 10. And just below that, public float interval, which is uh, the time in between these spawns. So I'll say one second. And I'll also hold a private float last time, which is going to be uh, the last time I've spawned an object. OK, and now we're going to take another function, so public void ready to spawn. And this is going to be run in some kind of update. So if time.time .time minus last time is bigger or equal to interval, then we're going to call our good old spawn manager. So spawn manager dot instance dot spawn. And now we have to overload. We simply spawn the object, or we spawn the object and we give it its uh, waypoint, or I mean spawn point. So let's use the spawn point as well. We're going to say we're spawning the spawn prefab index, and then for the waypoint, the spawn point index, like this. Now amount minus minus, and last time is equal to time dot time. OK, so before we get too deep in there, we're going to finish our wave event uh, class. And we're going to say, we're going to declare ourselves a public list of spawn info. And we're just going to call it, say, uh, spawn infos with an S. OK, now in the start time, we keep it like that. It's just the run event now that is going to be a little bit complicated. So in there, we're going to say if duration of our event is equal to 0.0, .0 
So if we put no duration to our event and span info dot count, so the amount of uh, span info object we have is equal to zero, then we're done. Basically, we're just going to say return false. So the reason we do this is because if we have an event that uh, we didn't put a duration, so we didn't put a set amount of time on that event, and uh, all these spawn infos are now depleted, so there's nothing else to spawn, then we're going to end the event over here. So to end the event, we return false. Okay, so that's our first check. We're also going to add a else if time dot time minus start time is bigger than duration and duration was not equal to 0.0f. .0 so say we did put a um, certain amount of time to that event, so there's a set duration, and we're above that point, then we're going to say return false. And it's simply going to stop spawning stuff. It is just going to uh, end the event. Okay, now this is time for the magic loop where everything happens. Let's start with a int i is equal to 0 as long as i is smaller than spawn infos dot count then we do i plus plus so for every single spawn info that we have we're going to say spawn info dot actually spawn info at the index i dot ready to spawn and this is going to take care of um, are we ready to spawn or not so this, this is around every single frame and if it is ready to spawn, it's going to spawn an object, remove the amount, and also set the last time. Good. So we could be leaving this like that, but it would have a, a small error. We need to say if spawn info at the index i dot amount is now equal to zero. So if we we're done spawning stuff, then let's do a spawn infos dot remove at um, the index i. Okay, that's a lot to assimilate, but let's go back in game to take a visual look at what it does. So, we have the level manager here, and this is where I'm going to be putting all the waves. Let's start with a single wave from now. So, drag and drop wave right here. And now we have no mean of setting this information. And the reason why is because we have some nested class and the inspector is not able to read them. Before we do anything else, we're going to go right above the wave event class and say system dot serializable now copy this and we're going to be using it on the other nested class as well so you have to put it right above the line and you put it also above spawn info class now we go back in game it should compile okay now so try to listen carefully we have over here this event list and it asks us how many events is there in our game, in our wave actually. Say there is three. Now we have three elements that just spawn in our list. So now let's go look inside one of these events. Inside one of these events we have the spawn info. Well first off we have the duration. So say we want a wave that lasts 15 seconds. Uh, a first event that lasts 15 seconds. And now it's going to ask us for spawn info. For the first 15 seconds, what do I want to spawn in the game? And I'll say, I want a spawn info of size 2 because I'm going to be using two different spawn points. And now it's going to pop another element list. And in there, I'm going to be able to define what I'm going to be spawning. And where, pretty much. So for this one, I'm going to be using the spawn point 1 and spawn point 2, so the side lanes. To do that, I'll go here, write 1 and write 2. I'll spawn, the spawn prefab is going to be uh, 0. I'm going to be spawning small orange balls. And I'm going to be spawning 10 of those. And also 10 of those here. At an interval of 1 second in between each of them. So if we read this, so for the next 15 seconds, I'm going to be spawning 10 balls on each side. So over here and over here. After 10 seconds, since our interval is 1 second, after 10 seconds, there should be nothing spawning on the map for the next 5 seconds. And then once this is completed, it's going to move on to the wave number 2. Now wave number 2, I'm going to put a 5 second on it. Then on the spawn info, I'm going to be using only one of the spawner. And it is going to be, say, spawner 0. So I'm going to be using only the spawn point 0. I'm going to be spawning a bus, a single bus. 
And now for the third event, I'm going to leave the duration at zero because I want the event to end whenever uh, they're done spawning. So I'll say I'll be using the three waypoints this time. So waypoint number zero, number one, and number two. I'm going to be spawning ten balls. 10 balls and also 10 balls with an interval of 0 0.5 seconds in between. Just like this. Okay, so if we recap real quick, for the first 15 seconds, 10 balls are going to be spawning from each side. And then after that, a single bus is going to walk through the spawn point 0, and then we're going to go back to spawning balls on every single spawn point in the map. Now this is really complicated and since I don't want to put too much on this video, uh, too much complicated stuff, we're simply going to go in the level manager and declare ourselves a temporary function. So private void update and in the update we'll say if input dot get key down then we put say key code um, we can put anything I'll put key code K we're going to do get component, component wave, and then we're going to do start wave. So this is of course uh, temporarily. So to start our wave, we're going to be pressing K, pretty much. Now let's go in game. Look at this. I press K, and then I'm going to open the event so you can see at the same time. Um, as you can see, the amount number is going down, then it's going to remove itself from the list whenever the duration is over. Okay, so now it is over, it's spawning a single bus, waiting 5 seconds, it's going to remove itself from the list, and now the last one. And this one is going to be removed whenever it's done spawning. So, um, this is pretty much our system. It's a little bit complicated to understand, but we're going to be working on it later on as well. Alright guys, so thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this or if this was helpful to you, please leave a like. If you have any question or comment, uh, which might be the case with such video, well, please leave them in the comment section below and also subscribe for more of these tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.